In the opening scene of the movie, we see Jim reading the newspaper. He comes across news of a robbery at a store where the storekeeper was shot dead. Jim starts speaking, saying that it's a murder disguised as a robbery. The storekeeper was a secret agent. He adds that he knows about this because he used to work for the FBI. Well, Jim was talking to the dogs at the animal center at this point, and even the dogs seemed annoyed by his pointless chatter. Then we see the owner of the animal center kick Jim out after firing him from the job. He quickly picks up his stuff and meets a group of children near a crossroad. He starts telling the kids that he is, in fact, a very rich guy, who only works here and there for fun. He has always been a smart kid, and by the age of 15, he made an artificial heart for cows. Since then, he has been making a lot of money. The kids started to believe him without any questions as they were too innocent. In reality, Jim is infamous throughout the whole town for being an annoying person who never shuts his mouth. While he's at it, he mostly makes up strange stories about how great his life is, though his life is as miserable as it can get. He then meets an old man at the gas station where he used to work. He asks him to hire him again, but the man refuses, calling him useless. Jim even offers to work for free, but still the old man rejects his offer. Instead, he suggests Jim to get serious and try fixing his life, probably by moving to another town for a fresh start. In the meantime, a stunningly beautiful girl named Josie stops at the gas station to fuel up. During dinner at home, Jim's younger siblings are making fun of him, but he simply doesn't care. He is having his dinner without letting any of their words get to him. His father informs Jim that he can't freeload in their home and he should pay his rent to stay. He also adds that he'll take Jim somewhere the next day to get him a job. The next morning, Jim's father takes him to a nearby mall named Target. On the way, his father warns Jim about getting serious for once, and if he gets fired from this job too, he'll send Jim to his brother's place. Jim doesn't like the idea at all, and realizes that he needs to get the job anyhow. Inside the store, he meets the owner who first hands out a well-paying job to Jim, but it turns out he misunderstood Jim to be someone else. Jim still wants a job there to avoid getting sent to his uncle's place. The owner tells Jim that there's only a job for the night cleaner open at the mall at the moment, and the pay is minimal. Jim agrees to join and leaves. Meanwhile, at Josie's home, we learn that her father is a rich and influential man in town. When Josie enters through the main door, her father asks her to meet the two guests present there. Josie purposely approaches the guests seductively and kisses one of them, leaving her father and the guests shocked. Just as Jim is known across town as a liar, Josie is known to be a troublesome girl. On the other hand, Jim is getting ready for his first day at work. He has booked a limousine to drop him off, and seeing the expensive ride, his dad is almost about to lose his temper. On his way to work, he comes across the kids who fondly listen to his made-up stories. When they question him about where he's going, he replies that he is going abroad for some important business. He tells them that he'll be meeting the vice president of Bulgaria first, and then having dinner with the Queen of Austria in the evening. The kids believe this story too, and consider Jim to be their hero. Poor kids. After reaching the mall, he starts acting like the boss, ordering the employees around. No one gives much attention to him as he strolls around the aisles throughout the day. Josie is also present in the mall, and we see her shoplifting stuff. As it starts to get dark, an announcement is made that the store is about to close. Everyone starts to leave, and it's time for Jim to start his first shift. The manager of the store explains to Jim that his job is to clean the whole mall during the night. He then locks the doors from outside and takes the keys with him. When Jim asks him to leave the keys behind, the manager tells him that no one gets to keep the keys on the first day of work. Before leaving, he also switches off all the lights in the mall, leaving only the aisle lights on. Jim doesn't like working in darkness, so he breaks into the power supply room and turns all the lights on. For a few minutes, he starts doing the cleaning for real, but soon he gets bored of it. He even tries to use a cleaning machine, but only ends up scattering things around as he isn't able to control it properly. He decides to call his parents out of boredom, but they too are sick of dealing with his nonsense and cut the call, leaving him all by himself. Jim then walks around the mall, checking out stuff and eating whatever he feels like from the shelves. He relaxes on a folding chair next to a mannequin, and then decides to put on some skating shoes and roam around the mall in his boxers and sleeveless top. While skating inside the mall, he sees Josie standing there and bumps straight into a stand. He asks her why she was there, and she replies that she fell asleep in the dressing room and when she woke up the store was already closed. 
Josie asks the same question to Jim, to which he replies that he works there. Meanwhile, Josie's father asks a local policeman to help him find Josie, who's missing. The policeman suggests that she might be staying at her friend's or boyfriend's place. But Josie's father rejects his opinion and asks him to accompany him. Inside the mall, Jim prepares dinner for Josie and himself using the microwave in the mall. During dinner, Jim keeps telling Josie that his father is a cement contractor, and their family is quite rich. He keeps on chattering like a parrot, and Josie asks him if he always speaks so much around everybody. Surprisingly, Jim replies that he doesn't. After having dinner, the two relax in the folding chairs. Jim lights an expensive cigar and starts boasting about his habit of smoking expensive cigars after dinner. Josie laughs and tells Jim that everyone in town calls him a liar, but Jim counters the accusation by claiming that they say so because they don't know him that well. Even Josie admits that she doesn't know Jim quite well. Josie then opens up to Jim, admitting that she didn't fall asleep in the changing room. She was trying to shoplift from the mall, but she was too scared to get caught. Jim is confused as she belongs to a rich family and could have whatever she wants with all that money. But Josie clears his confusion by telling him that she was trying to get caught for shoplifting because she wanted to harm her father's reputation. She doesn't like her father much because he tries to control her life a lot. Josie reveals that she is jealous of Jim because he is happy living his life. After hearing her, Jim opens up a little too and tells her that he isn't quite happy with his life as he realizes that his life is nothing but miserable at best. Everyone calls him a liar. He also tells her about his family and how they are not that well off. Josie then turns on the music player and starts dancing to a song. Jim too starts shaking his legs a bit upon hearing the song. The two share more about their lives as they start to get closer. Josie admits that she's still jealous of Jim's life, as Jim has freedom which Josie doesn't have in her life. Jim suggests she should run away from home, but Josie tells him that she doesn't want to be alone. Josie then gets an idea and asks Jim to accompany her to Los Angeles. She reveals that she has $50,000 with her, and they can both start their lives from scratch there. Jim likes the idea too and agrees to accompany her. Jim then recalls a childhood memory where Josie and he were supposed to dance together at a school event, but their teacher separated the pair and they couldn't dance together. Jim expresses that he always wanted to dance with her. Josie remembers the incident too, and they both happily decide to fulfill their childhood wish. As they dance slowly to a romantic song, they come closer, and in this romantic setting, share a kiss. After that, they hear someone coming to the front door. Jim goes out to see that Josie's father has arrived there along with the policeman in search of Josie. When the policeman asks Jim if he has seen Josie around, he instantly refuses and both the policeman and Josie's father leave. Inside the mall, Jim and Josie are skating through the aisles, enjoying each other's company. All of a sudden, they come across two robbers who are pointing their guns at them. Jim and Josie end up bumping into the robbers, and as the two robbers lie on the floor, Jim and Josie run away from there. Jim shuts down the lights and the two hide inside a dressing room cabinet, but the robbers find them soon, and at gunpoint, they order the couple to lie on the floor. Jim thinks of a plan and starts telling the robbers that they are making a mistake by getting in the middle of a million-dollar drug deal. The mafia will be there any moment, and Jim tells the robbers to get out of there as soon as possible. The robbers don't believe Jim, and they proceed to ask Josie about the story. Josie plays along and tells them that she's being held hostage by Jim. The robbers were starting to have doubts in their minds by now. Suddenly, Jim starts running around to cause chaos to announce that the mafia is already there. He manages to take away the guns from the robbers and then orders them to lie on the floor this time. The robbers tell Jim that the guns are unloaded, and hearing this, Jim returns the guns to the robbers. But the robbers were lying. One of them shoots at a light to reveal that the guns were loaded, turning the tables once again. Then Josie thinks of an idea and starts seducing the robbers by riding a toy horse. She suggests that the robbers should take her with them and leave Jim behind. The robbers are blinded by her act and beauty, agreeing to take her with them. They quickly load a lot of stuff from the mall into their car. But as soon as they are done loading, Josie gets in the car and drives away, leaving them shooting blindly at the car from behind. Taking the chance, Jim rushes to the storage room to get his hands on a double-barrel gun. He waits for the robbers behind a counter and starts making an announcement using the microphone. The robbers get back inside to deal with Jim, but when they see him carrying a bigger gun than theirs, they quickly rush to hide. Jim starts shooting blindly and later is able to make them surrender and tie them up. 
The next morning, Josie returns to the mall with the stolen goods and takes Jim with her as she promised the previous night. In the ending scene of the movie, we see Jim and Josie chilling by a swimming pool in Hollywood, enjoying their new life together. Thank you for watching.